Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you another hip hop jazz beat that I've been working on. I'm gonna play it for you first, then we're gonna break it down. It's about a minute and 10 seconds long, so let's get started. Alright, so there you have it. It's a little bit different from what I usually do, a little bit more sampling going on here. I uh, usually play my own chords, but in this case, I like the vibe of the track that I was pulling from, so just wanted to go that direction. Anyway, the main piano line is from an Earl Garner record called Concert by the Sea. This is what the beginning of that record sounds like, of that track. It's called Red Top. I think it's track six. <laughs> So it's pretty tasty. Uh, now here comes the part that I sampled. I'll lead up to it a little bit and then I'll point to you when it, when it hits. So here's the melody. It's a very simple melody and he uses some chords that I'm actually not really pushing forward. I'm superimposing my, my own chords using this bass line here. This chord progression that I'm using is a very basic standard chord progression. One, six, two, five, and then the second time around, instead of going to one again, I go to three, six, two, five. So it sounds like this. And that's the main theme there. Now let's go back to my track here and listen to it now that you have all that in mind. You can listen to the bass part to hear those harmonies that I'm putting underneath the melody. And then, of course, I, I can't uh, not mention the drum beat that I, that I played behind this. I actually sampled some drums from Questlove on Voodoo, which is D'Angelo's record. So it's Questlove playing drums on, on D'Angelo's Voodoo. And I just grabbed the drums and I played my own beat behind it. I love that kit, and I love the sound of that kit. For bass, I'm using a sort of a hip-hop uh, synth bass sound. And that's coming out of Trillion. This is the clicky JP8 triangle. And, you know, it doesn't, when I play it on its own, this is more of a mixing tip. When I play it on its own, it sounds a little funky. And the reason for that is, I got this parallel compression thing happening so that it cuts through the mix a bit better because it's such a low patch that I felt it needed a little extra little extra help, especially in, in the mid-range. So you can see here I boosted in the mids and, and cut out some of the lows and the highs just to get a little bit of beefiness back to the sound so it's not so low and inaudible when you're not using headphones. And that's one thing to think about when you're mixing your tracks is how is it going to sound on a laptop or on a cell phone? because you know, that's how a lot of people are listening to music now. If you put on headphones, you don't have to worry about it, but you can't guarantee that your listener is going to have headphones or decent uh, speakers or studio monitors. Okay, so let's listen to the whole thing once more.
I love this feature in Logic where you can load in an audio track. You know, say you have this audio track here. You right click it and you convert it to a new sampler track. It chops up the, the, the audio track for you. So really easy to sample. You can kind of set the sensitivity based on the transients. And uh, we, again, we can get into some more of this stuff in future videos. I just want to cover a lot of stuff in, in this one so we can get a good overview. So one other thing I want to talk about for the beginning here is this intro that I did. It's the same riff, but I'm turning the volume down. So. And I'm also adding quite a bit of reverb to just make it sound a bit farther away so that when the actual beat comes in, it kind of like surprises you. It's in your, it's more in your face. You get that nice contrast. I also did some um, high pass and low pass on that. So we're just hearing this sort of mid, high mid-ish range here. Anyway, this is what it sounds like one more time. So you can see when the beat actually drops, when the beat actually drops, it's much more in your face. By the way, this is what it sounds like. I'll go between the uh, the EQ'd version. And also, that EQ actually cuts out a lot of the junk that's being picked up by the, uh, the live recording. Okay, let's go forward here. Uh, this is kind of cool. In the second A section, so I got the intro, which is what we just heard. Then we have this first A, and then it repeats. And that's the second A. So if you're, uh, if you're familiar with forms, this is pretty standard. We have an intro, we have the A section, then we repeat the A section. We're gonna go to a bridge in just a minute. So let's uh, first tackle the second A. We do something kind of interesting here. So that right there, it was taking it up a half step. And the reason I did that is because, well, it popped into my head, quite frankly. I thought it would sound cool. But what I'm doing is, I'll, I'll pull the piano up again so you can see. So remember the chord progression was. So all I'm doing is instead of, which is your two five, two five, and then remember D flat is one. Instead of doing this two five, I'm taking it up a half step. So it sounds like this. entire track up a half step. So the bass transposes as well as the rest of the sample. And the way I did that was by using this AU pitch plugin. It's, um, you find it when you go to audio units and then Apple AU pitch. And you can just go up a hundred cents, which is about a half step. And then I come back down right after that. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> in the bridge and I did it, it might be a little bit too epic listening to it now but I wanted to do some sort of uh, transition something that changed it up switched it up a bit so we have this reverse symbol hit effect so the melody note is F and the chord I put underneath it is a flat 13 sus so you have the A flat in the bass here, that's the root. Then you have the, uh, the G flat, that's the seven. The B flat is the nine. D flat is the sus four. And then F is the 13, so A flat 13 sus. And what I do is I take this, the whole sample and everything else that I'm playing, and I, and I do a similar technique that I did in that second A where I move it up a half step. And this voicing works very well for transposing. And if you watched my last video, you know how much I like taking a good voicing and transposing it up and down to find some interesting combinations. If you haven't checked out that, uh, that other video, I'll, I'll link it up. Anyway, um, let's keep going here. So we have the A flat 13 sus, we transpose up to A 13 sus, back to A flat 13 sus, and then down to G 13 sus. And then I think we repeat it. So let's, uh, let's listen to that. Okay, here comes the bridge. Okay, we'll get
get to that part in a second. So the rest of the bridge is, uh, it's the same figure repeated in the keys. And we bring in the bass the second time. You can see that here, bass, B bass is bridge bass. And then we also add in this pad, which it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a build, especially with the, the modulation that I, not modulation like a key modulation, but the modulation wheel on uh, on a keyboard. You can see I've, I've written it in there so you can hear how the, how the sound of the pad evolves. The modulation is affecting that brightness, so that's why it's getting dark at the beginning and then it, it gradually gets brighter. The other stuff that you're hearing is pitch bend, and you can see that drawn in here. Where the heck is it? There it is. So there's the pitch bend. And I use that on the, uh, the sample as well, the piano sample. You can see that here. You know, other things that I do to the bridge here, I add in the tambourine. <laughs> I also add some reverb to the drums again to make it a little bit bigger, just providing some contrast between the A sections. If everything sounds the same, then people tune out. Again, a little bit too epic, perhaps. I don't know, maybe it works. Let me, let me know what you guys think. All right, so that's the drums. And then this. So we do two things here. We're, we're doing something harmonically, and we're also doing something rhythmically. Let's do the harmony first, because I think it's, it's probably easier to explain than the rhythm. So the harmony is we have a pedal in the bass, and a pedal means you're playing the same note over and over again while the harmony changes above it. So if you look at my bass part, you see we have this, this D flat that just repeats over and over again. That's all D flat. And then above that, we have these ascending triads. So the cool thing about having a pedal bass is you can do a lot of interesting stuff with the harmony that sits above it. So again, we have this D flat in the left hand. And I start off, I start off with an F major triad, which to somebody who's not used to the sound might sound a little dissonant and wonky. And it's only gonna get worse. out nicely because at the end we end up on D flat major in the right hand and taking this voicing is very similar to what I was talking about before about using that that voicing the A flat 13 sus and moving it around we're taking this very simple triadic voicing in second inversion this is an F major triad that's the fifth there that's the root that's the third C F A and same voicing all the way up left hand stays the same we go all the way up to that D flat triad let's hear what it sounds like once more so rhythmically we're doing something real cool here what started as this one two three do da da do da da do da da do da where that was the beat, we're, we're anticipating each beat. Do da ba do da da do da da do da. Now the beat is landing with each of those melody notes. Do da da do da da do da da do da. So we're making this sort of illusory tempo that's completely different from what we had before, and then. Directly following that, we go back to the original feel. I'll play that part for you once more. What else? Oh, check this out. This t-shirt that you're looking at right now, 
This t-shirt is available for pre-order. It's the Jazz is Dead t-shirt, the official Jazz is Dead t-shirt. If you want to get the special discount price, you have to pre-order. It's going to be available soon, but the pre-order is only going to last a little bit longer. So I'm going to link that up as well and down below. I'm telling you, it fits great. It's American Apparel uh, style t-shirt. Really nice. Anyway, thanks guys for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time.